Should you watch to Sakamachi Moonlight Festival? I definitely just brutalized that. <laughs> but you know, this is an anime that I've had my eye on for quite some time. Have you ever seen a show on paper that has everything you like? So many boxes checked, so many things queued up, and almost are assured to love it. And it actually delivers. This is one of those times. <laughs> this is a show that has everything that I hold dear on paper. I am their target audience, and you might be too. So, let's get into it. First of all, Moonlight Fantasy, we'll call it that, boy gets isekai to another realm, except this time around, he just gets sucked to another world. He doesn't get killed by truck-kun, nor bus-kun. <laughs> but the person that pulls him there is this cruel and mysterious goddess. But he is quickly intercepted by this fantastical god that gives him a ton of power, so much so that he ends up depleting this said god, and the god wishes him well. Now some fun things this show does right off the hop is it introduces pretty interesting ideas for why the main character is strong. For instance, you've heard this before, but because Earth's gravity is stronger, he just is innately strong and dense and durable. And after receiving the blessing from this moon god, he goes to see the goddess and she, like I said, is the absolute worst. But she does give him one strength, the ability to understand all languages, but not humans, because the goddess favors humans and she hates him, so she just throws him with the rabble. Uh, not only that, but then she casts him aside into the wasteland, the harshest part of her world. Now, as the main character is plummeting to his death, he gets reunited with, of course, the good god, the moon god seemingly who is an absolute bro dude who gives him a power spike um and then says you got it you'd be okay and now let's pick up the pace long story short he plummets to the ground he's absolutely fine he eventually finds this lovely person um don't want to spoil too much for you this person later shares with the main character how to do magic and then he starts seeing the gift that was given to him by the moon god seemingly a ton of a ton of magical power even though he's only level one fast forwarding some more along his journey he meets various monsters one being a beautiful dragon and a terrifying spider and after some things happen long story short now he has two lovely waifu <laughs> companions to embark on this world with but another element that is a part of this story is that the dragon gives him access to a realm. A realm in which he seemingly, pretty quickly here, starts piecing together a tribe of monsters. Not, not quite the same as reincarnated slime, but close. And the rest is kind of a blur. And if I could speak on a couple things, uh, the relationship between the main character and his his goofy fun companions is lovely and very very fun when it has time to develop and breathe <laughs> it's very very good the world is beautiful it's designed uh, incredibly well the tropes and the ideas that they persuade in the show is so so good like one of the ideas it's not too much of a spoiler is that the main character has an absolute abundance of power so he meets a dwarf and a dwarf basically gives him rings that deplete his power to the extent in which they supposedly should kill him but as soon as he puts on these rings, nothing happens, he just normalizes them. And thus, the journey of this tiny dwarf trying to kill his master by draining his power through his rings and inventions begins. <laughs> um, and that is essentially what's happening. Not only that, but the main character is wears these rings, which literally are like atomic bombs with the power that he keeps putting in them. Cool ideas overall. Um, not only that, but the development of a nation, kindness, weird realm, whatever you want to call it, is incredibly interesting. Something I fell in love with Overlord and, of course, Reincarnates a Slime, being the one that I think did it the absolute uh, best. But if you are like me, you maybe picked up on something within the show, something that to me felt off. Uh, and that is the pace of this show is extraordinarily fast. Some people are going to love this. Other people, including myself, quite enjoy when a show slows down and lets you sink into an idea, develop a cool, interesting premise to be something that you can truly understand, dig into, and learn to love. This show is on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Uh, its pace is, in my opinion, ravenous, um, which can be very good and keep you stimulated and engaged, and it does know why certain tropes are so beloved. For instance, the power gain, the companion uh, slash monster attaining thing, like the, these, these these tropes that people love uh, is because we want to see that character be strong, we want to see that character be a badass, we want to see that character pop off and show their strength to people who don't necessarily have that strength. We also want to see them nurture and teach that strength to others, and this show knows all those things and satisfies a good bit of them. But again, its pace is so ravenous. It's almost like it's hitting, it's like a person hitting a dartboard, but like nailing every shot, but you can't even enjoy the the fact that you got a shot to hit. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. It feels like it's missing a little bit 
little bit of something. For instance, not too much spoiler here, but when you eventually get to the last a couple episodes, you're introduced to a character uh, who just kind of becomes one of the boys without having time to really develop him as one of the boys, <laughs> as one of the members of our lovely trio. Um, so things like that don't really get developed. Um, the main character has a strong emotional response towards the end of the show that kind of comes out of nowhere um, and yeah, feels a little like this should have been paced out in a different way, and I'm leaving the question off to you for some of the people who read the manga. Did the anime rush? Because it kind of gets that, that's the feeling I get, is it feels like the anime really tried to get everything it possibly could in there, and it did a pretty good job, but you still kind of ended up with something that seemingly was supposed to have time to develop and sink in, and instead we were on to the next thing. Uh, now, so that one criticism, that pacing criticism, is cratered by one of my favorite things that they do in this show. This show's combat, when it is there, sometimes it's not there for a while, but when it is there, is super satisfying. Frankly, it's some of the best I've ever seen in any show. This might just be me, but I love the sound design. I love the fact that the way they did everything with the combat, it feels so, so good, especially with the main character and the use of magic. I remember hearing a lot of animes talk about how they developed new technology to to sync up water and like this animation uh, to try to show how cool magic could become with these new animation techniques. But I never really seen them stand out as much. But in this show, the amazing moment when he basically converts a, a normal fire spell into a chain gatling fire barrage, and he, then he summons six of them, and you just hear, <laughs> it just sounds so good, the crackle and the wisp, and then he summons forth javelins of fire that have this sizzle on them as they crash and tear. It's, it's so satisfying and so good. Magic I've never seen done better, frankly. Um, I, I loved that aspect of it, and that aspect of it would do did to me at least stand out. I'd be curious to see what you guys think, those of you guys who have watched the show. But largely, to answer the question, should you watch the show and or who is this show made for? I think if you love the isekai genre and you're not tired of the tropes, instead you still find them lovable and enjoyable, there's plenty of the tropes in, in this show and they're done well, to the point in which you actually are getting to see the best part of what the trope is, what makes the trope good. Not only that, but if you like some adorable characters, aka waifus, then this show has you taken care of. If you like the economic growth that people fell in love with reincarnated as slime or the realist hero, uh, this show is not quite you. That's the one thing where I feel like they didn't do a good job at, and that's indicative of the main character feeling seemingly uninterested in that right now. Uh, it very much, that's one thing that I feel like is a down point for the show is that the economic development feels like the main character is like, oh yeah, that's going on, whatever. And that's not satisfying. In fact, it's quite frustrating. Uh, that's the only other takeaway. I got two negatives, pacing, and of course the economic development thing didn't really feel like it was satisfying. Frankly, I think this show was made for most people to enjoy. Um, so I think this is one of those weird shows that yes, it's, it's something that everyone should go check out because I think it's made for kind of everyone, which in itself is kind of the issue. These are the things that the show, to me at least, doesn't quite, quite have. But what is fantastic news is it's a very good show. And it has a guaranteed season two coming down the pipeline, so there is more to come. And I guarantee you, you'll binge this show. One thing I should have mentioned, I binged it in two days. So as much as I'm like, there's some little baggage, the baggage was nothing in comparison to the, the just devouring <laughs> that you will do with this show. Uh, if you're at all interested in it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you letting me ramble. I think the show is kind of made for everyone, and yes, I absolutely think you should watch it. It has a lot of fun ideas, and I hope season two actually slows down and develops those ideas with uh, with a greater pacing balance, I guess. But if I have sold the show to you to a sufficient degree that you actually watch it, check out this video right over here. Essentially, it's us talking at a nauseum about things that are more spoiler adjacent, uh, going into what I thought was fun and amazing about the show, and also what might have been a little bit off about what I was feeling when I was watching it. But there's something off, whether that's the pace, whether that's the surface level execution, whatever it is. Um, check that video out if you so desire. Thank you kindly for your time and goodbye my friends.